Watcher didn't get the same development process as the other characters did. Uh, and, and I think you can really see that in the way her cards ended up. How's it going, little Samsung? Hello to Germany. Glad to have you here for glad to have you here for a live stream. Wolf Ramite says, what do I think an expansion could add? My preference would be to see um, alt, rather than adding more to the the game and sort of overwhelming the game with more content. If you add more relics, for example, it becomes less and less relevant to think about any one of them in particular, which can lead to a lot of an analysis paralysis. So, for example, simply doubling the size of the relic pool I don't think would necessarily make the game better. But what I do think would be cool are alternate options for, let's say, the acts. Other roguelites kind of have something like this, where in Dead Cells, for example, you, you have diff different paths you can take through the game. In your starting area, the next area that follows, there's a, a path that's more difficult, a path that's easier, paths that contain special events you're trying to find. And you could do the same thing in Slay the Spire. At the end of Act 1, you choose or are randomly assigned one of three different variations of Act 2 to go to, each of which have different bosses, different enemies, different stuff, different events, and I think that could be really cool. Kind of like FTL Sectors, also a good way to look at that. Why did the devs abandon Slay the Spire? I wouldn't say they did that's amazing. They finished it. Slay the Spire is a finished product. They did everything they wanted to do with it. They added four characters and a, a final ending. Uh, they quite well balanced all the cards in it, and they translated it into every language under the sun, pretty much. And they also made tens of millions of dollars off of it. So I think they, they consider it finished and complete, something that the book has closed on, and that they're now looking forward to working on something else. They've been fairly shadowy the last couple of years. They are working on something, but in proper video game development style, it's unwise to share the thing that you're cooking until it's actually coalesced into some kind of discrete shape. So they'll they'll announce a new game if and when it reaches sufficient completion that they're confident they'll actually release it. And probably not before. Did I say Spire made tens of millions of dollars? That's a uh, just a guess by me. It might be more than that, actually. Uh, I'm not sure how many s copies Slay the Spire has sold, but it's uh, many, many copy across many different uh, platforms. One and a half million copies as of 2019. That's when it first released. So... Yeah, more than that, <laughs> by quite a bit. Because it's it's come to Switch and, and Android uh, since then, and that's going to be a lot of purchases. So it's got over 100,000 reviews on Steam. Like, yeah, it's a lot of people have bought it. And if you conservatively estimate that they make five bucks per copy, it's still going to be, yeah, tens of millions of dollars, practically. Or at least several ones of millions. Another fun uh, profit math for you. Try to figure out how much money the Vampire Survivors guy made off that game. It's a big number, even though the game is $3. I'm down for either a remove to or genuinely a colorless card start. Maybe we can master a colorless card this run. Remove two is spicy like though. This is three elite at most, realistically two. Into slime boss. RMK, why did the slime boss's minions all go on strike? Because slime doesn't pay. Actually, fun fact for everybody, if you've ever wondered why the slime boss is wearing a little bowler hat, it's a pun on crime boss.
they didn't know. Let's try colorless cards, let's run. This is the only one that's not mastered? Well, hmm. This is certainly a set of three. I don't think this is the run for forethought. But it could be. Let's try Deep Breath. Shuffle the discard pile into the draw pile, draw one. Bit of an odd card. Falls under the card manipulation category for me, but a, a weird form of it. Although in this case, actually putting Eruption and Strike back into the draw pile seems pretty good. I like it. All aggro, please. Beautiful. Ooh. I think this might finally be the time we take the Reach Heaven. All three of these are perfectly excellent first damage cards to take. Uh, usually I actually prefer Carve Reality over Reach Heaven in Act 1, but that's mostly because of Lagavulin. Uh, you can play this without waking up Lagavulin. You can't play this without waking up Lagavulin. But uh, Reach Heaven can do a lots of damage. Dr. Leo Spaceman, thanks for nine months. And hey there, Faley. Uh, we won and it was pretty spectacular, too. Last minute pivot into double reprogram, into winning and mastering reprogram. Always click too much on Scrapoos. The t secret Atomica is to decide how much health you're willing to lose and then commit to a, a certain number of uh, clicks. So here, for example, five, six, seven. I'm usually willing to click about three times, lose 19 health. I think we're only going to need about 30 to 40 health for this act. Uh, I couldn't couldn't easily summarize how I can estimate that, but that's probably pretty close. Crazy mouse pad alert. Heck yeah, add one to the list of beautiful mouse pad owners. I'll click three times. One, two, two clicks for a shuriken. If we play three attacks in one turn, gain a strongitude. Shuriken, pretty powerful on the Watcher, I gotta say. Hmm. Corruption here is not so good. Let's go Vigilance, Deep Breath, Defend. Ooh. Alright. Might be wrong to not play those attacks, but here we are. Worked out. 40 damage. It's a lot of damage. Third Eye for Scry or Sash Whip for damage. Would never take a Nirvana here. The Scry makes it easier to utilize the Through Violence. Interesting with Deep Breath, perhaps, as well. I believe it's pronounced Damage. Early Sash Whip is perfectly fine, and with the Shuriken, we're going to have a lot of attacks that we can play anyway. But I'll take the Third Eye. Scry is very, very valuable. Over time, I've come to value Scry at about two-thirds of one card draw. It's better than half a draw. It's not as good as a full draw. Maybe 0.75 draw. Either way, that makes Third Eye about equal to 7 block draw 2, which is better than Shrug It Off or Backflip. By my arithmetic. Maybe that was Triple Defend. Hmm. 0.66 repeating. Duke Pot's very good. Okay, we don't need to go to the shop. Do I add an empty body? 
a tranquility for stance control, or do we say no thanks to all of the above? I don't totally dislike tranquility here. A retaining calm entry is a nice uh, emergency exit, so to speak. And upgrades notably to be a zero cost calm entry, which is pretty powerful as energy generating cards go, too. Probably want to hit the shop just for a defend remove, huh? Yeah, we do. Thing is, I don't really want to leave Wrath, so I'm not going to take any of those cards. Leaving Wrath is for suckers. Oof. Okay, that's a pretty good flurry of blows with Shuriken. Normally I say you need, you need at least one relic to make the flurry worth it, and we have that relic. Mental Fortress not too bad either. We'll buy a flurry. Not just take a flurry, but actually pay for one. That's how you know I'm serious. to me like I'm going to need to duplication the Reach Heaven here. The Cubes of Evil. Yeah, Dupont Reach Heaven, a uh, really nice way to make this not so bad. Next Elite shouldn't be too difficult. So we hit it twice first and then we scry. Discard those two. Give me a through violence next turn. And if I want a point of strength, which would make through violence do 21 damage, I should play Miracle Strike here. I think I will do that. Seems relevant. No eruption, unfortunately. But this is fine. We take two damage, and then we win next turn. I'm in. Take 10 this turn, or gamble on not taking 20 next turn. I'm going to gamble. Easy every time. Kunai! Oh my. Oh my. Okay, well now I'm going to take an Empty Fist. It's an attack, it changes our stance. We gain the stats. Finally, a run where we can master a flurry of blows. It's a very beautiful start to see both of those ninja relics right away. Almost makes me want to go Burning Elite here. We lose one upgrade, get the Burning Elite. Hmm. Let's get more events. Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's hmm. do this first. That went badly. Oh well. Second, third eye. Probably pretty good in the long term. I'll do it. 
and an early singing bowl. Now we can gain uh, max health instead of taking cards. Not Kremlin Knob is pretty exciting. Although both my wrath exits on this turn is a bit odd. We have a lot of control over what's in the draw pile, though. Let's see. How do I want this to go? If I could draw everything except the defend next turn, that'd be pretty good. Okay. That's a pretty good turn. Sure. Let's go aggro. We always draw the through violence next turn. So we do quite a lot of damage. Almost enough to kill, actually. And depending on what damage we get alongside the through violence, I think we do get a kill. That'll do it. Absolutely destroyed. Art of War is a weird compliment to Kunai Shuriken, but sure, if we play no attacks, we get energy on the next turn. Indignation or Empty Body are okay here. I'm pretty happy with a uh, 2 max health. J Guy. Substreak equals time plus money, thank you, for 34 months of support. Could consider taking Windmill Strike here. It's not very good. The only reason to take it would be the Not Mastered label on top. For our mastery challenge, but we've already got uh, stuff we're working on. I think we're fine. Hmm. Hmm. Might be able to get away with Smash here. Go into Slime Boss with comparatively little health. And just win anyway. That would let us keep more max health for the rest of the run. Gonna do that. Wallop or cut through fate? Wallop is very good with Kunai Shuriken. Cut through fate is scry and draw, which is also very good. Rudge, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Prostrate, actually not awful either, although I think we want one more attack for Slime Boss. Cut feels better for Slime Boss. Take a cut. And don't be fooled into thinking I'll uh, rest at either of these rest sites. We're here for upgrades. Let's upgrade Empty Fist. Does Kunai affect Wallop? The Kunai won't add to the block of the Wallop, but the Wallop will activate the Kunai. Because it's an attack. Okay, now I'll rest. Essentially digging up money there instead of upgrading a card. I could do Slime Boss at 2 health, actually. It's Watcher. Let's just do Slime Boss at 2 health. So do we upgrade the Reach Heaven, the Cut Through Fate, or the Deep Breath? That's my question. Probably upgrading Cut Through Fate. For one more Scry in addition to the damage upgrade. That'll help us find the Through Violence more easily. Yeah, let's upgrade Cut Through Fate. Flurry, not an upgrade candidate. Two more damage per time it comes back to hand. Not really important to me as much as uh, looking at extra cards. 
No, I, I don't think the flurry upgrade is that good yet. Really, flurry is more about activating kunai shuriken than anything else. Hmm. I can do flurry, strike, flurry, or I can third eye here. Looking at the top cards is kind of important. We're okay. Getting into calm is kind of important too. I could go Miracle Third Eye. That's a fun choice. Oh, should have did it. But now we can set up a really good turn. Yeah, that'll work really well. So we draw these cards next turn, which means I can play Eruption, Reach Heaven, Cut Through Fate, True Violence, Empty Fist. Pretty sure we just killed the slime boss. Just watch her things. Yeah, slime boss destroyed. GG. So we have seven more max health and a lot more money than we would have if we had uh, decided we needed more than two health for slime boss. Easy. Ooh, master reality and devotion, huh? Hmm. I do like devotion as a mantra source. Master Reality is no good. It upgrades through violence, which is cute, but no. Slaps is an alpha deck because of the scry. That's not not something I disagree with, actually. If I was going to take any of these, and I'm not actually inclined to believe that I should take any of them currently. Are we going to fight long enough for devotion? Not currently. Uh, although, I think the first fight where this really matters will probably be the Act 2 boss. And I'm not even sure it matters for that. I'm not going to take any of these. Coffee Dripper? Who needs resting anyway, am I right? When is the right time to take Master Reality? Mostly, you don't. It's, uh, it's one of those cards that's pretty solidly below the curve most of the time. But when it's good to take is mostly with Dead Branch, is what I found. Dead Branch makes it quite spectacular. It can also be pretty okay with um, Study, creating a lot of upgraded insights if you've got time to set up. But that's a little too fancy for most runs. Oh yeah, we have the Golden Idol, so we could get Bloody Idol here. All the more reason to take the Coffee Dripper. Bloody Idol would be quite welcome. Conjure Blade Plus. That's a fun way to do it, too. It's actually a not untakeable tiny house, but we definitely want more energy here. Hopefully between the... Singing Bowl in our natural Watcher inclination to smashing everything to death on turn one. We should be able to find... Happy... Road to success. Hmm. That said, we have to fight an elite early. Look at this. There's no way past this. Pretty rare that Act 2 forms this kind of uh, wall for you, but it, it does happen maybe... One in ten, one in five runs. And you have to be able to to, uh, to deal with this sort of thing if it does. If you're going to face an early Act 2 Elite, I highly recommend having two potions for the job. It's almost impossible to, just using a deck of cards and a boss relic, produce enough output to convincingly defeat the Elites of Act 2. They are just that strong. I do think we want to visit a couple of question marks here, maybe try to find the Bloody Idol. This would be a reasonable start path here. I would also take Bites pretty happily from the Vampires. I would really happily take Bites, actually. Let's also go this way. Yeah. Birds. Bird nerds. Use 
just die? You just die. Good talk. leave these cards sure discard uh, my general rule when scrying by the way is discard anything that's a striker defend unless you have reason to believe you specifically need that striker defend uh, the more you're drawing non-starter cards the better your performance will usually be Could even get more energy next turn let's do it or like fart of war Good first fight. Ooh. Follow up is excellent with Kunai Shuriken and has a free upgrade. Meanwhile, Halt scales incredibly well with Dexterity. Or Inner Peace is a way to potentially draw cards, as well as being another stance change for the Flurry of Blows. Dang, that's a good follow up though. Who's our act boss? Our act boss is the champ. We can beat champ with Kunai Shuriken scaling pretty easily. Halt gets two dex procs, yes. Both the initial number and the additional block in Wrath are affected by dexterity. It's a fun pick. I think Inner Peace is the more broadly useful Watcher card. Follow-up is just spiking our immediate damage and helping us kill Act 2 elites, which is actually really important. If I want to get past this red node, Follow-up Plus is the better card. Okay, we'll do that. Ooh. You know, I think this might be a run where we take Jax. Jax trades health for strength. It's notably a card we haven't mastered. A bit odd with a coffee dripper, though. Instead of that, we could elect to transform two cards, turn two of our cards into new random cards, which can be very, very strong. Or we can take bonus strength on turn one with mutagenic strength, which can let us kill enemies very quickly. Hmm. The main goal for taking the jacks here would be the possibility of mastering it later in the run. I think either of the bottom options are a bit better overall, though. Let's do the mutagenic strength. Let me turn one power. The power. Might be a fight for the weak potion. Weaken the front one here. Save six health at least. Let's do that. Three this turn, three next turn. I don't think I'm killing them both next turn. Or am I? Not convinced that potion was a good use. Oh well. Now we can take inner peace, but there's also upgraded sash whip and wallop again. Wallop is even better than before, with more energy now. How much win percent are we willing to sacrifice to attempt to master a card? Pretty much all of it, vegetable bread. I, I, I'm I, not, although I am tracking the win rate through the challenge, it's it's ultimately not part of the goal. So win rate is, is not a concern. 
We've had a couple of runs, I think, that have, have won but not been able to master any cards, but for the most part, we're, we're looking to master something on each run. Otherwise, I'm not making any progress in the challenge, and it's functionally no different from abandoning the run, I suppose. Although, a good win is still a, a definitely valuable thing, just for being entertaining. I'm clicking this inner piece. We're doing it. We're doing it. Hard draw. Maybe. Ooh, okay, we'll master Necronomicers. I get it. Now, taking a Book Relic, losing 21 health is very risky when you have Coffee Dripper and no easy way to get your health back. But the three different Book Relics that this event can provide are all pretty dang strong in their own right. If only I'd taken the Wallop. So, for example, here... Uh, vegetable bread. This is a, this is an instance of me making a probably a different choice than I would otherwise, and probably losing some win percentage, because I want the I, I want to be offered the chance to potentially master something difficult. In this case, Necronomicers. I'm pretty happy with Encoridian too. Turn one powers can be very very useful. Hmm. Uh-oh, Snake Plant. Snake Plant attacking me on turn one. Oh no. This might be a short run. Twitch shut. Death by running out of hit points. Happens to us all. You attacking me again? Uh-oh. Oh boy. Oh no. Hmm. Deep Breath is my only card draw, you say. This seems pretty bad. Guess I should probably Deep Breath first. Third Eye and then Deep Breath doesn't work the way you would want it to, unfortunately. Let's just see what this gives. A Strike! Oh boy. Um, We live on one? We don't have a kill here, do we? There's no way, right? Going to one hit point. We are super dead. Yeah, the deep breath has been truly terrible, and, and quite frankly, so has Flurry of Blows been. This is a great example of a turn where Flurry of Blows is not helping the deck at all and is just accelerating our, accelerating our demise quite substantially. Just double check here. We've got 8, 12. That's a 20, 40, 49 damage. Not even close. All right. Ouch. I'm saying the card blows. That's right. We're not dead yet. We have three hit points. And a hope and a dream and a rushdown. Oh! Mutagenic strength might have just saved our life. Look at this. So what do we want to do here? Flurry, Eruption, Cut Through Fate? Oh, there's so many different ways to do this. Flurry Redemption Arc, go! want to cut through fate and then deep breath. My guess. Let's cut through fate here.
Yeah. Currently not dead in hand. I like that. Means we can play deep breath with no concerns. Empty fist. Excellent. Don't get them both, do I? No. Easy every time. Just don't die. Or use your potions. Duvu Doll gives us a point of strength for every curse of the deck. Currently one point. There's a weave. Returning to the hand every time we scry, which we can do lots of. With Shuriken Kunai. And I'll keep the current potions. All right, if there is a waffle in this shop, then all is well. And even if there isn't, we're actually still alive. You should draw two. Really wish I could have slept there. That is not a waffle. However, Rushdown's here. Lantern's here. Nunchaku's here. Nunchaku's here. And card removal is here. Can we eat the cauldron? We could try. <laughs> Still only have the one wrath entry, which is a bit of a problem. Maybe a good reason to take a stance potion. Can I make it through another elite fight? I think Book of Stabbing just... Well, actually, it could go okay. Hmm. Dance potion too expensive, though. Feels weird to remove defends on three hit points, but here we are. Five fruit juice in the cauldron, of course. Of course. Mummy hand with uh, Incaridian. What do we think is the right way to proceed from here? I think I just go for this elite. Let's do it. Master Realty. Not a, as long as it's not a snake plant, we'll be okay. That's right. Hmm. I see. So you have chosen death. With a Swift Potion and an Energy Potion, I'm actually not particularly afraid here. I think we do want a Rushdown Eruption. Okay. That's not enough. Right, just Vigilance Defend doesn't keep us in it. That's only 17 block. Inadequate. Okay. Um, what if I reach heaven, cut through fate now? We can actually guarantee that we get the thingamajig. And I have energy, too. So I think that's a kill. Twenty-six plus twenty... Yeah, yeah, that's a kill. Easy. Upgraded. Sixty-eight damage. The power. Tori can allow us to survive hits. Mental Fortress could be block. Wave of the Hand could be block. Could 
little bit worried about the early turns if I take Mental Fortress currently. I don't think we can afford it. If I just do this. Proceed to champ. We could keep flying by the seat of our pants through this act, but I'm not sure we should. Now we'll get Waffle in the shop. Problem is now I can't afford it. Mouse pad crew, hell yeah. Get those shiny, shiny disc pads. Don't think I can take an elite if I rest. Ah, uh, thing is, we're not allowed to do that. Can't rest. About that resting thing. Yeah, I could upgrade. Enthusiastically. But, uh, yeah. Can't, uh, can't rest. No rest for the wicked. How about rushdown for the wicked? Yeah, we'll upgrade rushdown. Could have been 10 health. The second reach heaven. All right. We either master this relic or die or this card or die trying. Let's go. Let's go. Do I want a different potion? Block card. Block card. Actually, yeah, I wouldn't mind evaluate. Can we master the through violence part of Reach Heaven? No, you can't. They do display not mastered, but it's impossible to get these in your deck, so they will never be mastered. So you have chosen death. Maybe Empty Body is better. Hmm. Definitely want to not die to champ on turn one. With only five block cards in the deck, that's going to be tricky. Alright, I'll take a value it. And yeah, we're going to go two events here. I don't want to mess with an Alita again. Receive apparitions in exchange for half of our max health. This is a time where apparitions are worth at least thinking about when you, uh, you don't lose any health for taking them. Are these actually helpful? It is unclear. But honestly, the biggest concern is getting out of the act alive, so let's do it. Excellent! And I don't have enough money to give to the Vagrant. What a shame. We could gain a point of strength and a curse here, but I don't think having a curse is a good idea. No thanks. Have you no shame? Do we upgrade an apparition? Or do we upgrade a third eye? Upgrade third eye. I don't need to upgrade the apparitions if I can just scry them away on turns I don't need them. So, we fight the champ and we didn't die on turn one. Already this is going well. Upgraded apparitions lack the ethereal keyword, meaning that uh, if you choose not to play them, they won't exhaust. Whereas here, we're going to have to play these now. Might as well just play all three, I guess. I'm fine with that. Do that next turn. Play Miracle to play Vigilance. I don't feel like I want to do that. I'm going to double the damage of this. We're going to put a couple of through violences into our 
hands. Just keep them there for a bit. Empty fists, flurry, inner peace, flurry. good stuff next turn. That definitely qualifies as the good stuff. But we're likely to get attacked next turn. Be a little careful here. Okay, so we need to make sure that we can lock this turn. There we go. Definitely don't have a kill here on the champ. Is not a thing, I'm afraid. But we can do a number on him. And fully block this. Pretty easily. This turn champ will remove any debuffs he has, and he, uh, get very angry, which we're not going to allow. Could have used one of our potions to outright kill there, but we don't need to, because champ is dead. GG. We actually made it out of the axe after dropping to one hit point. Again, snake plant, uh, like what, here? Here, I think. And then we just, easy. Fight two elites, no problem. I like Vault here. My main goal is to master, uh, what, Reach Heaven on this run? And maybe Flurry of Blows. More turns, please. Yeah, Mutagen's Relic definitely helped out. Ooh, Pyramid's here. Pyramid's a game changer. Retain our hand every turn. Is going to let the blocks be blockier. Would make a halt really good. Makes the Apparitions worth upgrading. A pier I mean, if we upgrade the Apparitions, Pyramid's amazing. Let's do that. Certainly it's not a uh, Velvet Choker, right? Although Duvu Doll Cursed Key is kind of fun. I wouldn't necessarily say 38 max health and Cursed Key is very fun, though. That sounds like a terrifying experience, really. So now that we're immune to everything, why don't we just murder everything? Also. Although upgrading one or more apparitions on the way does seem like a bit of a priority. Would this deck take an upgrade all? Oh yeah. It sure would. Yes, it would.
Vault and Intangibility work really well together. Oops. That's actually not what I meant to do, but it's fine. Foresight could be nice. Scrying every turn. Yeah, with Vault especially, I think it's quite good. Oh! Alright, money where my mouth is. Do I upgrade all these cards? Probably. Is max HP healing? Yes. So the Singing Bowl will no longer work. We'll have exactly 30 health with which to do the rest of the entire run. If I choose, I am awake here. But having all of our blocks, uh, our apparitions, our attacks upgraded, it's really, really strong. Let's do it. Dink, dink, dink. Say if you're getting more than about 10 upgrades from I am awake, you should at least think about it. Like I said, it's very, very strong. Being able to retain these apparitions from turn to turn makes us extra tanky. Extra all-powerful. So, for example, here, if we click to max health, we don't go to 32 out of 40. We go to 30 out of 40. We don't gain any current health from that. Um, lose my only wrath source, lose one of my three apparitions, or lose my foresight plus. Rude. Couldn't ask me to lose strike, huh? Had to be these. Okay. I'll lose the uh, foresight. Bit of a bummer, man. Mind blast. Weird and evil, not bad. Still waiting on another wrath card. Very happy with a striker move, though. Bring it, Repto. What do you got? I'll fight you to death. I'll fight you all. I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, we wanted to keep that. So, third eye first, then eruption, definitely. Show me an apparition, good. Uh, in fact, let's ignore these daggers. I'm just gonna go straight for Repto here. to ignore their attack here. 100 damage, no problem. Easy.
Fennib. Every tenth attack is doubled in damage. Scrawl is very good when you have a runic pyramid. Draw until my hand is full. Yes. Does Fairy in a Bottle or Lizard Tail work with the Mark of the Bloom? No. Simple way to think of it uh, for me is that your health cannot go up for any reason. There are no exceptions. Pretty foolproof. So for example here, heal to full health, lose 7 max health. All that does is cause me to lose 7 max health. I'll take 300 bucks though. Thanks, Golden Idol. You jump back a little as the gigantic molars smash down on the island. Tasty. Alright, all the more reason to go to this shop then. More events, please, and certainly more elites. We are, as they say, elita farming. Having a good time of it. Oh my. Heaven, deep breath, I guess. Those are very good cards next turn. Giant head never stood a chance. Duality. There's the, the final piece of the puzzle, so to speak. Whenever we play an attack, gain one temporary dexterity. That is a very big deal indeed. Second rushdown doesn't actually seem that good. Skip these. Zen Ninja Online. I Ibex RL, thanks for the 12 months. Enjoy your ad-free experience. As an ever reminder, actually, I don't talk about this enough. Being subbed to the channel on Twitch gives you an ad-free viewing experience on any platform. As long as you're subbed. Pretty cool. Get to avoid the mid-roll ads that are uh, random. I don't have control when, over when those appear, although they do support me. Unfortunately. If I had my preference, uh, ads would never roll on the channel. It's just not my style, but... At least for live streaming. Night Owl! Wants a dad joke. What do you call a relic that perpetually keeps your room clean, but prevents you from ever healing? Mark of the Broom. That's also why we didn't take the max health, is that it doesn't matter. Can't gain HP because of the Mark of the Bloom, and that includes the Singing Bowl. Prayer Wheel Singing Bowl, not today. Mark of the Roomba, I like it. I like it. Eighty-eight damage, empty fist. Holy moly! That's a lot of damage, man. Jesus.
Wait, actually, that does something. That'll upgrade uh, Scrawl. And if I take a skill here, we can upgrade Tranquility. Although I probably just want another cut through fate. Actually, Tranquility is pretty good. It's a bit risky, though. I'll, you know what? I'll take it. Boot thingy. Double merchant. You've had one merchant. Now try two merchants. I'm pretty sad we didn't take Jax. Could master eruption? Actually, not only do we need to master eruption by duplicating it, but it's actually the best thing to duplicate, right? The, the main thing this deck is hurting for is a second Wrath Entry. And yeah, we can duplicate our Wrath Entry. And yes, Jax, Jax would have killed us, probably. That's true. Sure, let's dupe the eruption. And with another shop coming up... Uh, oh, second flurry blows too, right? We have we haven't have the second flurry yet. Let's do that also. Do I want fasting? I don't think so. Finesse is good though. Finesse is very good. I'll do a finesse. Although it prevents me from affording a relic, I will not do finesse. How do you master a card? Yes, you have to win with two copies of that card in your deck, is the rule. It's our self-imposed challenge. Ooh, Frozen Eye. Hmm. Is Frozen Eye that good? When you have Third Eye. Third Eye is already Frozen Eye, right? There's still some utility to it, definitely. Gives me a lot of very important knowledge. I think I will take this. This lets us see the order of the cards in the draw pile, which is super strong for a variety of reasons. I know we're not doing damage, but I'm getting stats for the, for doing all that, so it's pretty worth it. We're also getting dexterity per attack we play, which means my blocks are very blocky indeed. Hello, yes, I would like to block for 21, please. Thanks. Graph. Unfortunately, that does nothing at all. I will, however, take a cut through fate plus. More damage, more draw, more scry. Does blast me plus vault kill you? Yes. Yes, it does. 
All right, we haven't taken a single point of damage since upgrading everything. If we can continue to not take damage through both bosses, I think it'll be definitively worth it. Question is, can we survive the boost fights? I'll play Nirvana. We'll do it. Weave for the energy next turn. Really good turn one. Really good turn one. Really, really, really good turn one. Go Wrath and just use the Apparition here. Don't feel the need to yet. Look at that block, though. Alright, now we can just kill Awakened One. Nib. No one. That's one dead bird. GG. Okay. Okay. Here's a fight where. Turn one's looking a little spookier. I like that we got a devil for him. But uh, turn one is looking taking damage -y. Unless we could find either Apparition or Vault or something off the Cut Through Fate. Show me the Vault. Defend, Flurry, Evaluate. Maybe we just take one here. Oh, we have Frozen Eye, that's right. So we know the, the next card is Strike. Forgot about Frozen Eye. Yeah, so just give me the evaluate then. Okay, so all we have to do is play the strikes and we'll actually block for enough. That's pretty good. 12 and 14. We can even see where that insight went. It is way down here. So no need for the next potion yet. Although I did think about it there. Can use inner piece to draw. Okay, let's do that. Go tranquility, inner peace. Rushdown's not in play. That does not get me to scroll. Hmm. 
Now we can enter Wrath if I want to. Kind of reasonable. damage strikes, no problem. You'd love to see it. I like that the, the frozen eye lets me know whether I should be scrying or not. 100 damage, by the way. Blapped. Alright, we're into Act 4 with zero damage taken. Since upgrading every card in the deck, that's surely a good sign that we're on the right track here. We slap that heart for 2745 damage. I don't think we've actually taken damage in any of our boss fights this run. It's pretty hype. And there's only one card to upgrade, the Flurry. Last shop contains a hand drill that I can't afford. Indignation's another Wrath Source. Just Lucky is honestly pretty good with everything the deck is doing. Let's grab this. Maybe I wanted a stance potion. Probably. Hm. I think we'll be fine. Scrawl is here. And man, those apparitions are far down in the draw pile. Spooky. But we can draw a lot of cards. Oh yes. We draw a lot of cards. Check this turn out. We're gonna go... Flurry. Eruption. Flurry. Play this. Scry away. This, this, and this. And then draw. Beautiful turn. Not bad. Eighty four damage, empty fist. Let's go. Turn one, killed them both. Good turn one. Halt is here. Halt is spectacular block. Probably want that over the prostrate. Hey, Ghost Wizards. There's several thousand hours of practice behind my play, but uh, don't be afraid to ask questions about what I'm doing or why, if I'm going a little too quickly here. Excuse me, I thought that was illegal. Bronze is nice, but I think we'll go Dex Potion, Energy Potion. Feels like our damage is already adequate on this run. Alright, we got a bonus rushdown. How exciting. So the biggest question we ask ourselves is, do we wish to play Deep Breath or not? Looks to me like the answer is no, because I think we can get... The most important thing is, can we get to Apparitions for the first attack cycle of Heart? And I think the answer is yes with this draw order. 
Although, let me double check. Next turn we draw these five. Eruption can draw four more to get us to scrawl. Oh yeah, we're fine. anything else on this turn? Not to my understanding. Okay. Lucked out. None of the status cards in the top five there. We can see where they went. Mostly towards the bottom here. It's good. So, Beat of Death is going to be a bit of an issue here. We're going to have to play as a lot of attack cards. We do the following. Three. Like discard Strike, although I want to play this later in the cycle here. What's your fate to draw rush down? Forget the tranquility? Yeah, forget the tranquility. Weave is not happening. Fist is free. Okay. So now we go eruption? No, we go miracle eruption. No flurry though. Halt is here. Alt will block for quite a lot as long as I play a bunch of attacks first. It'll also just be intangible. Pretty reasonable. That would let me stay in wrath. Some other shenanigans too, like this. Vigilance. Draw the void while I have zero energy. So I don't lose any. Play this, get energy back. Might as well play this now. Stop the beat of death from being a thing. This, this, draw the eruption right now? You might as well. I actually do want to be in Wrath here. Perfect. What a great turn. No attacks in hand. Interesting. Probably use another apparition here. Might as well, I think. Vault is also reasonable. Go apparition vault. Go through violence. Reach heaven. Through violence again. Block all this. Stop there. Uh, this is what's in the draw pile. That's a very good draw. Just want to change stance there. 
All right, six strength, seven dexterity. Things are looking up here. I think life is quite good at this point. damage. Flurry, tranquility, flurry, eruption. Cap that damage. Looking pretty good. Just get another stat. 23 dexterity. No, it's only 11. 8 by 15. Uh, even in the worst case scenario, Tori can stop this if we exit uh, Wrath here, but we can do far more than that. We can play Just Lucky for 52 damage, is what we can do. Amongst other hilarious things. Twenty plus twenty six block. Seems good. Oh no, I've made a terrible mistake. Which is that I cannot block the beat of death anymore on this turn, which means we must take two damage. I know this is distressing news to you all. But it must be done. To play the apparition, take one, you're right. One damage. But then I have to play another card, so we actually still take two damage. Yeah. GG, Mr. Hart. GG. What a beautiful run. So that's how you reach heaven. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.